because there were times like anything else that life hits us. When, when the mortgage industry disappeared, I had a choice to make, bury my head in the sand and try to find a different industry or take the same skills and put it into my passion, which was music and go ask, an out for, ask for the business as a touring artist. And it worked. If it hadn't worked, okay, then I would have shifted again. But why not take that moment when life hit and say, let's do this. And so for me, I just see it as this constant evolution. When I was back in business development and still performing, and I was asked to host a TV show, I had not done that before. I'm like, why not? Why not? If I fail, who cares? I've learned something beautiful. But what if this works? And I would have never dreamed it would have opened up doors to a lot of the things that I get to do today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lusting Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. We are getting off the Bruce train, though I'm sure he will come up as he normally does. And I am talking to a writer, a coach, a musician, and someone we just laughed about the green M&M story together. Amy, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Be great to be with you. Anytime that we can talk about music is a great day. So thank you for having me on today. Thank, I appreciate that so much. Um, you know, we pull the curtain back. There are different sites out there where you can connect to get guests. And um, I, I'm i always happy when I, because I'll send a, uh, an email to someone who's a business coach or like a, you know, uh, they'll, they'll be doing a book on fitness and I'll go, Hey, do you want to talk music? And often I get people going, yes, I always I talk to. about LinkedIn. I never get to talk about music. So well, and with me, you get both as a coach yes, and a did. recording artist. I, I love that. I get to dive on both sides of those fences, depending on the platforms that I'm on. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little about yourself. After 20 years of a diverse career in sales, business sales coaching, and then having the entire real estate and mortgage industry collapse, stepping me into being a full-time recording artist and touring, and then you add in my years as a TV host on a national television show, and then 2020, the pandemic hits and my media coaching all of a sudden elevated because everyone in the world was on camera. And now you have this beautiful combination of taking these careers where I understand the professional and I understand sales and asking for the business and effective communication. And I also understand to know what it's like to be on camera, to be on stage, to be on radio. And I have the passion for music. And I was able to combine my passions and my skills into what I'm really proud of that I get to do today. And thankfully, at the same time, released a new project, a new album just in 2022. So I'm still promoting music at the same time I'm coaching and doing PR and and doing public speaking. And it's fantastic. I could not have asked for better. That is so good. I, I'm going to talk about the album because I listened to it today. I watched Thank the, you. I watched the blooper video, which was so funny. <laughs> oh, I'm the so water came up. That. Yes, that was just so funny. I did want to ask, though, and I'm going to skip ahead in the agenda. It's okay. You've had different work lives. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you, you've been an on air host. You've done coaching. You've performed the opening for some of the biggest in names in country music. Yes. You, you've had your name and face on covers of music and magazines of the day. How are they similar and how are they different? And do they speak to different parts of your creative self? Yes. And yes. And here's the similarity. Okay. Each one of these things requires a confidence in the way I present myself, effective communication, because when I'm just a touring recording artist, I had to go to TV stations and promote that music or that show. I had to be on radio. I needed to be able to storytell and be engaging and be entertaining. I needed to not have a bunch of filler words. If I came on a show and everything was, um, yeah, so I wouldn't get asked back. So having effective communication was powerful. And asking for the business allowed me to have those great moments on the big, some of the biggest stages that we have here in the U.S. And it was my sales career that taught me how to do that. So I see them as one giant, beautiful, wonderful life. And it was a power of shifting. 
because there were times like anything else that life hits us. When, when the mortgage industry disappeared, I had a choice to make, bury my head in the sand and try to find a different industry or take the same skills and put it into my passion, which was music and go asking out for, ask for the business as a touring artist. And it worked. If it hadn't worked, okay, then I would have shifted again, but why not take that moment when life hit and say, let's do this. And so for me, I just see it as this constant evolution. When I was back in business development and still performing, and I was asked to host a TV show, I had not done that before. I'm like, hmm, why not? Why not? If I fail, who cares? I've learned something beautiful. But what if this works? And I would have never dreamed it would have opened up doors to a lot of the things that I get to do today. One of the things I love, Amy, is um, I'll listen to Penn Gillette's podcast, and they talk about that Teller, his silent partner, always tells people to say yes. Yes. And you'll figure it out later. If yes. someone says, can you do this trick? He says, yes, I and love you that. go figure it out. If yes. someone's like, can you open this show? Yes. Yes. I booked an entire tour and didn't have a band put together yet. <laughs> I said, yes, booked the tour and then eh, I'll work this out. And then right when I need came to me right when I needed it. And it was amazing and perfect. I said, yes. I, I, I think that is good advice. Um, I remember early in my business career, um, I think it was uh, McKay, Harvey McKay, that talked about um, if you know you have to do a project, don't waste your energy arguing why you shouldn't do it. Just <laughs> say yes, and then take all that energy and figure out how to do it. Exactly. Um, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, complete sense. Yeah. Complete. All right. So let's go back. I always like to start at the beginning. Yes. Um, a young Amy, where are you growing up? Uh, and what kind of music was your family listening to? Well, I grew up in Southern California, a little town called San Dimas. And for those of us that are my age, you know, 20 or older, uh, we remember Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So I always get asked if that was the city. Yes, it was. You know, San Dimas High School football rocks. I went to a private school. I didn't go to San Dimas High, but that's where I grew up. My last name is Scruggs. There was not another choice for a genre. When you have a Scruggs last name, you are country. And my dad raised me on country music. It's what he loved. It's what we did together. It was beautiful. And at five, if you had asked me what I was going to do, my answer was I was going to be Barbara Mandrell. That was the goal. That's where I was headed. So it was always country. And that was definitely the route. Now, over the years, I've expanded that I love singing classics and jazz. And, you know, of course, I learned other genres. I have a big rock influence in my music and my live show now, but started with that foundation. It was country. And with the last name Scruggs, it belonged there. Did did you ever feel like you needed to rebel or this spoke to your heart and you're okay with it? Oh yeah. This spoke to my heart. Yes. Okay. Yes. No rebellion. No, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm way too disciplined for rebellion. Way ah, too disciplined. I'm, okay. I have four grown kids now. My youngest is in college. The kids toured with me. My mm -hmm. oldest son, who's now almost 32 was my lead guitar since he was 17. Wow. So there's there's been a discipline and a drive behind what I've been doing with a business plan and a purpose that's always been there. Even at 8 years old, I was putting on shows in the backyard and and forcing my friends to be the backup dancers. So there was a business plan in motion. I charged a quarter for the neighborhood kids to come in and watch this show. So I think there was just something in there that I knew that's what I wanted to do. You you always knew you wanted to make music. Yes. I that started playing piano at three by ear and I was mm -hmm. singing and comfortable in front of audiences by the time I was five. Yeah. Have you ever had a chance to be, meet Barbara Vendrell and tell her you no, wanted to be her? I would, that would just be the dream of a lifetime. And I'm putting it out there. I believe that that's still going to happen. I know enough people that know enough people. I think we're all that, you know, two touches away. And I think it's a lot closer because yes, I would absolutely love to meet Barbara. That, that is her. wonderful. I, I, one of my favorite stories is a guy named Mark Evanier um, said that he watched the the Dick Van Dyke show and he saw that Buddy and Sally and Dick seemed to have a good time writing TV shows. And he decided that's what he wanted to do. He was in an elevator with Dick Van Dyke later and he said, well, I, I, I don't know if you've heard this before. And Dick stops him and says, 
you watched the Dick Van Dyke show, you decided that it was fun to be a TV writer, and you got to marry someone like Mary Tyler Moore. Yes. <laughs> he goes, yes. I'd be surprised how many people tell me that story. <laughs> That's amazing. What inspiration, yeah. though. And I bet he loved it every time. I know. Absolutely. I, absolutely. I know I would. Yeah. Um, I did listen to Love Another Day. And thank you. I, I love the album. It, what I loved is they're they're not songs that are sappy, but nope. they are a positive tone. Yes, um, by design. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. At this stage in life, and especially with grown kids and very proud of my career and very positive and motivating and how I run all of my businesses and who I am as an individual. And to quote my producer, Fred Mullen, who is one of the greatest producers of all time, you can't, it's hard to name a project his fingerprints aren't on, especially in TV and film. And when we were doing the song pitching with the publishers and writers from Nashville, as we were going through the, the thousand songs that we went through. He would say to them, listen, she's a mature artist. I don't want any, uh, no trucks, no tattoos, and no beer. We want positive songs. I wasn't looking for heartbreak songs. I wasn't looking for something to make you cry in that way. I knew that I wanted to inspire, but also I appreciate you saying not in a sappy way. And I really believe that those five perfect songs were exactly what we found. Like the example fly, what a beautiful tribute to my, to my children. And especially I released it the same month, my youngest daughter graduated high school to move on to university and to dedicate that song to her. The music video was filmed on the campus of her high school with her friends in it. And it was fantastic. What if it all goes right? What a great celebration for the world. And that was the response I, I received back was the world needs this song right now. So choosing songs that I felt could be an anthem them for a cause. Maybe a nonprofit wants to use one of those for their mission. I wanted really cause-related, mission-positive music, and that's exactly what happened. My favorite, when people ask me my favorite Bruce Springsteen song, I often say Better Days, which is one mm. of the albums he did when he was broke up with the E Street Band. And the lyrics is, you know, while I'm waiting for my I'm waiting for my life to begin while it's all just slipping away. Uh, I believe the song is about understanding that life is very quick. And mm -hmm. if you spend your time waiting for good things to happen and not enjoying the journey, it's going to be gone. Too Completely. Many people, too many people say, well, when when I get that record contract, then I'll be happy. When oh, I get that show, then exactly. I'll be happy. And it's no, you have to enjoy every step of the You journey. have to enjoy the journey. I, I yes. would have never dreamed I would get a call 18 years later since I had last been in Nashville that I'd have the opportunity to do this dream project. But I didn't feel unfulfilled because I hadn't done it. I was like, wow, well, I've performed live on some of the greatest stages in the world. I've I've opened up shows for some of the largest country artists of all time. And on the other side, also Chubby Checker and Tony Orlando and Frankie Avalon. Like, I felt complete. And this project was just a, wow, it was like a life hug. So I see those extra things or when those things come in is just a beautiful life hug. But it doesn't undo the joy of all of the journey or the other experiences that led to that moment. When you have, when you're giving advice to people, what are things that you see on a regular basis that you feel that people need to be reminded to do as you're in your role as a coach? To definitely take the limits off. I have to share that with a lot of a lot of individuals, first of all, even the ones that I work with, with becoming comfortable on camera or recrafting how they present themselves with their vocabulary and, and their, their dialogue. A lot of times we get stuck in that. No, I can't change. Yes, you can. Our brains are amazing things. And on the other side, from a motivational standpoint, taking the limits off of, well, if I haven't done this by the time I'm 40, then forget it. Well, now look, you know, I, here I am, I just turned 50 and I finally had the hit songs I had dreamed of. I'm glad I took the limits off and said and didn't say, well, it didn't happen at 35, so it's not supposed to. Taking those limits off, you, your story is different. Your timeline is going to be different. It's only we as humans that put these time constraints on things. And we take that off, an ability limit and a financial limit, whatever those are, it's amazing what can start happening in our lives. And the same as a coach, listen, let's take those limits off first and let's watch and see what you're about to do. Because I could teach you how to speak on a, a large stage as a keynote speaker. We can have you comfortable with your video marketing, doing podcasting, telling your story and telling your mission, whatever that is, a business or a nonprofit. And I speak 
specialize in helping individuals take those restraints off and really deliver. You've, it, it sounds like you often find that people, and this is a cliche, right, are their own worst enemy. They're, they're, they're starting in, instead of, and it isn't just a matter of a positive attitude. It just truly is work, picture your dream, work for it, and, yes. and un- enjoy the journey. Visualize yourself already in that success. Mm -hmm. visualize it already successful. It's easy to visualize it failing. Well, then you're probably more likely to have that happen, but visualize that successful moment, whatever it is. And then once we have those little successes, we anchor those. So the next time go, oh, but that's right. Last time I really was able to do this, or I was successful. And it creates that new energy that breathes life into those things we're trying to be successful at. What's next for you, Amy? What what's next that you're visualizing besides getting to uh, tell Barbara Mandrell what an inspiration <laughs> she was to you? Yeah, I wake up every morning and I'm, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to provide value. For me, it's any other processes or places that I'm going to be brought to that I can now provide value by sharing my story, whether it be through music, through my business journey as a mother. I was on a wonderful show the other day, just inspiring young mothers because I have grown children now and seeing it on the other side and how to look at it. So if I can tackle anything that's in front of me and say, can I provide value? Then that's what's next. And it's really fun because with that then comes some really fun opportunities, like maybe a second album, which we're already talking about doing the next album with the same producer. But I want to continue providing value because that will open up those resources and opportunities to continue doing that. You wrote a book. Tell me a little bit about Lights, Camera, Action. Well, like everyone else in the pandemic, a lot of authors came out of that, myself included. I used that time to say, how can I re- recraft and shift? Because I couldn't go to the TV studio. I couldn't speak. I couldn't perform like everyone else. I was sitting down and I thought, you know, I have a lot of years of working with professionals on being comfortable on camera. And I sat there and watched in horrors. I saw so many individuals just failing on Zoom meetings or on being on camera. And it was really quite a shift to, to observe. And I thought, you know, I bet if I put some of these tips down, I could be value. I could be helpful, but it wasn't just me. I also reached out to some really incredible people in my sphere and in my network and said, will you contribute? Will you give your input on the power of the first impression or why it's so important to know your message? So what was really fun was the collaborators that actually joined me in this project that I trust and respect and love so much. And so for me, it was really a wonderful heart project that came together. And I'm so grateful that it's out there now. I can't believe it's, it was three years ago. I started writing that almost three years ago. And and here I am uh, still talking about it and it's still a blessing and working for professionals. So I think it's great. That is awesome. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I, this is, I feel like I could talk to you all night. This is, this is amazing. Um, tell me a little bit about musical influences besides country music. You mentioned mm. you had a little bit of it. Who are the artists that you listen to for inspiration? I really walk a lot of, of, of genres. So I'm a huge fan of Sting. I mean, Bruce Springsteen as well. Secret Garden is my favorite song. Just there's something about that that is just so powerful and beautiful. Love that song. I listen to inspirational and Christian music. I The country genre, of course. But because of raising kids and three boys, there was a lot of rock influence that came in and, and influences in that. And then as my daughter came along and hitting that pop genre, So I think there's just been this influx because of the family I raised that it was nothing but influence coming at me on rapid fire, that some of it wasn't even my choice to be influenced by, but it seeped in. And I'm so thankful for it. Like I'll be in the car now singing along with Dua Lipa as much as I now understand what Bad Bunny is. And there's, and then I love Beyonce and there's all these experiences that are brought to me from raising kids that I feel really become a part of how I interpret music and how I perform as an artist. And it's really fun. I'm glad I'm older because I have a lot more influences that have been kind of indoctrinated into me as a performer now than if I was younger. Yeah, that I, that sounds good. I, I like that. And the diversity is really wonderful. Um, how do you w- tell me, people where they can go to find more information about your music and about your work. 
Well, what's fun about the name is that it's unique. So if you Google Amy Scruggs, you cannot miss me. But if you want the exact handles, Amy Scruggs Media or Amy Scruggs Music, they're going to take you to the same place. So you can you can literally find me if you Google Amy Scruggs Music, Amy Scruggs Media. All social media platforms have that name attached to it. So I'm very grateful that the unique name allows me to be found very quickly, plus all the press and all of the history that I have also helps bring all that up to the top of the feed. So I'm easy to reach and I'm easy to find. <laughs> uh, with a name like Jesse Jackson, it is not as easy. No, to find. <laughs> you might be buried down in there with some X <laughs> extras. <laughs> um, I ended up putting my Twitter handle as Jesse Jackson DFW because there were people that were yelling at me on Twitter. Oh, that no. All lives matter. <laughs> and what do you what do you think about Al Sharpton, Reverend Jackson? You're like, I just love Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> exactly. I'm just I'm just this I'm just this old white guy from Dallas that's obsessed with Bruce Springsteen. Um, all right. This has been a blast. I am so appreciative of your time. I am Thank going you. to go. Uh I, I continue to I'm going to continue listening to the release. I think you just have a beautiful Thank voice you. and a wonderful message. Um, I end every show with the Mary question. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little background. Jay Armstrong is an honors English teacher that recently retired, but he would take two days with his senior English class and would they break apart the song Thunder Road as mm -hmm. a poem. They would look at the lyrics. They would talk about the themes. And yes. at the end of the two days, he would ask the question, does Mary get in the car? So Amy, that is your question. <laughs> Does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? No. Okay. I don't think so. I, I don't think she was looking for the savior. I think that there was a lot of description of her experience and where she's at in life, but I think she's ready to fly and find her own wings and figure it out. I love that. That's a great ending. All right. Once again, Amy Scruggs Media, Amy Scruggs Music. Uh, do you have anything coming up that you want to promote? The new song just released, Something to Believe in. So please go to your favorite streaming platform and, and download the music, download this five song EP and check it out and stay tuned for new music videos coming up in the next few months as well. Very nice. Amy, you're a joy. Thank you so much. Jesse, uh, it was an honor to be with you. Thank you so much for sharing this passion together today. Well, when you uh, when you have your new album to promote, reach out to me. We'll have you back on. And uh, if there's anything I could do for you in the future, let me know. I'm going to hold you to that. Thanks so much. Very good. Listeners, you go check out her music. Go check out her website. Um, be safe, be kind, and we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. There we go. Another episode. I'm about to go through a couple of things where you can reach me and give me feedback. Um, so if you want to skip this, I understand. But I do hope you check it out every once in a while. I'm available on Twitter at Jesse Jackson DFW. The show is available at setlustingbruce. You can send me an email, setlustingbruce at gmail.com. You can send me a voicemail at 469-249-2442. I am currently doing a few other podcasts, perfectly good podcast, John Hyatt from A to Z, where Sylvan Groth and I discuss every John Hyatt song in alphabetical order. My Babylon 5 podcast is Last Best Hope for Conversation, where Lou, Karen, and I discuss every episode of Babylon 5 in chronological order. I still am doing Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast with my brother in time, Charles Gags. And then finally, How Many Podcasts, the only podcast on the internet that counts, where my buddies and I discuss pop culture. You can go to our Patreon page and support the podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can go to our Facebook page, like, and please, please go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and leave a five-star rating and review for all of the podcasts that I'm doing. It's okay if you don't listen to them, but if you subscribe and rate, it really will make my day better. Thank you, and I will talk to you soon. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, Set Listening Bruce. 
the theme for Set Lessig Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.